Okay, on to weather forecasting. And at the very start of this semester, I made available to you a document kind of pulling together something called Weather Proverbs, and which kind of each one of us can kind of sense changes in um, humidity and temperature and uh, barometric pressure and kind of make some judgments as to what the near uh, weather forecast might be. And animals do this all the time. But um, why do we care about the weather? Well, we care about um, it being good weather for our social events, and we care about our safety um, and as it relates to bad weather. So weather can, can mean life or death, and weather can mean do I get to see my friends and go on a picnic or not. One of the things that I've recently um, thought about is our, uh, our NASA program, and I know it has nothing to do with meteorology per se. It does, but it doesn't, right? And as you know, our uh, space shuttle um, our space shuttle program is, um, I want to say, uh, been shut down uh, due to its age and all that. And so we're looking for different technology. And uh, what I've heard is that they're going to basically, instead of keeping the government um, necessarily directly doing the experimentation, they're going to open it up to contractors. This has to do something with meteorology. Just hang on. <laughs> so recently I've heard that, that there's a group um, that is based out of Texas. That's what I was trying to get to. That is actually going to start now, um, you know, that is hot into getting us into outer space. And they uh, are making, they have made advancements and that sort of thing. My point is, is Texas would be a lot better, more reliable, I think, weather to launch in than um, Florida. That was my whole point. So as we talk about weather forecasting, um, here in a minute you're going to see that for sure it's going to involve computers these days. Now computers weren't always around, but and what I want to show you on the next few slides though is that the kind of a little bit the organization um, for the weather forecasting. And you've heard of some of these acronyms. I'm going to kind of start with the um, the United States. Uh, Folks, we of course you've heard of the NWS stands for the National Weather Service. Here in Southeast Iowa, we have National Weather Service out of Quad Cities, and you've probably heard of NOAA. And actually, I think I mentioned NASA a minute ago. I think NOAA and NASA have a NOAA has a dotted line under NASA, so NOAA would be over the National Weather Service, and NOAA stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, Here's another one for you, the, the NCEP, the National Centers for Environmental Prediction. They are part of NOAA, as I understand it. National Weather Service would be under the NCEP. Okay. Um, so out of the Quad Cities for us, they are, um, they are the most local for us. And of course, it gets regional from there. So these are all the United States. So here's some pictures. These look a little dated to me. I don't know. I see a flat screen com, uh, maybe computer there. I'm not sure. But these are just kind of some typical uh, typical office at the National Weather Service. Um, speaking of National Weather Service, um, they have a couple of important branches specific for covering the United States. Out of Norman, Oklahoma, they have the Storm Prediction Center. I don't know if you remember, but in uh, recently when we talked about severe weather um, for us, like thunderstorms and that, the, that we have these convective outlooks that look, um, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days out. The folks in Norman, Oklahoma are the ones that put together those convective outlooks. Then, of course, uh, we have the National Hurricane Center out of Miami, Florida. So kind of looking a little bit worldwide, um, we have the World Meteor Meteorological Organization, WMO, and they have three, they're located in, um, they have branches in three locations worldwide. Of course, we have one here in North America, in Washington, D.C. We have, there's one in uh, Moscow, and there's one in Melbourne, Australia, a place that I'd like to visit one of these days. So it makes sense that um, when we're talking about weather, we can't just look at the skies over here in North America. It is definitely a global phenomenon. So it's kind of fun that here in this day and age of computers and the internet, 
um, that we can communicate quite handily and we need to communicate quite handily worldwide.